So during an interview on NPR, Martin O'Malley was basically talking about Hillary Clinton taking a few shots at her, as I said, and also taking some shots at the Republicans when it comes to their trickle-down stuff. Now, he's going to first talk about Hillary Clinton changing her stance on certain social issues while, of course, highlighting that he has stayed quite consistent on those social issues. So first, we have a quote from him from the NPR article, or I'm sorry, the NPR interview, and he said this. Now, I'm glad she's come around to those positions on the issue of marriage equality. Of course, talking about Hillary Clinton, which we passed in Maryland. I'm glad she's also come around to the issue of driver's licenses for new American immigrants so that they can obey the rules of the road. Okay, this was also something we did in Maryland. So I'm glad she's come around to those positions. So basically saying, look, you, kind of like Obama, recently evolved on LGBT issues. That's good, but we already did so in Maryland. Come on, Hillary, get with the times, girl. What are you doing? Taking forever to evolve on these issues. Or in Maryland, we got there first. Kind of like a, ha ha, we got there first. Um, we're, we're more progressive than you, essentially. And look, I like that. I, I like when somebody comes out and says, I'm more progressive than you. What are you going to do about it? And that's sort of the problem that we have today in our politics, is that so, many, uh, so much of our politics is dragged off to the right, where conservatives are trying to out-conservative each other. You don't see that as much on the left. So to see Martin O'Malley come out and, and start swinging, that's great. That, that's what we want to see. We want to see people saying, I'm more progressive than you. Come join me on the progressive side. Come join me where we enjoy freedom and opportunity. I love it. He continues, actually, he continues with the economy. Now, he says, uh, the Republican Party is doubling down in this trickle-down theory that says, thou shalt concentrate wealth at the very top of our society. Thou shalt remove regulation from wherever you find it, even on Wall Street. And thou shalt keep wages low for American workers so that we can be more competitive. We have a different theory. Our theory, as Democrats... And as the longer arc of our stories, Americans, is that we believe that a stronger middle class is actually the cause of economic growth. Now, he's got data, of course. There's, there's plenty of data to back that up. He's got data. We've got data. There's just all sorts of evidence that backs up that, yes, when you do this, that helps economic growth. He also continues. What ails our economy right now is 12 years of stagnant or declining wages, and we need to fix this. Now, I would make an argument that it's been bad for longer than 12 years. And, you know, there are other issues other than uh, stagnant and declining wages that are issues in America. But he, he's standing up and saying, look, Americans, we're having a problem paying our bills because we don't make enough. Wages are stagnant. That's a great message. I like that. Now, what's his policy prescriptions? Well, he's been advocating for a raise in the federal minimum wage of about 1010. Now, 1010, we all know 1010 isn't enough. I would like to see him push for 15. They've done that in Seattle, Shama Sawant, a self-avowed socialist says, look, 15 bucks an hour, Bernie Sanders, 15 bucks an hour. Martin O'Malley, not quite as progressive on, on that issue. But altogether, I mean, he's pretty much tied with Barack Obama on trying to call for a $10 minimum wage. No doubt that a $10 minimum wage would actually help a lot of American families. A lot of people who, you know, are working in fast food, retail, you know, even some manufacturing jobs start out at 9 bucks an hour or lower. So a minimum wage, a federal minimum wage of about 10 10 would be great. And he has actually done something about it. In Maryland, he has raised the minimum wage to $10 an hour. So that's great. And that goes into what he says next. Talk is cheap. And there are two ways to go forward from here. And history shows this. One path is a sensible rebalancing that calls us back to our tried and true success story as the land of opportunity. The other is pitchforks. <laughs> I love that. Oh, he's just jabbing him. Jabbing him. Now, history affords no other pass. 
We're either going to sensibly rebalance and view the things that allow our middle class to grow, that expands opportunities and allows workers to earn more when, when they're working harder. Remember, we're the most productive we've ever been in America, and yet we're not getting compensated fairly for it. But he continues, or we're going to go down a very, very bad path. Well, I would argue that we've been going down this very bad path for a while now. Now, what does he say about uh, conservative income tax plans and uh, economic inequality? Well, he uh, says, our tax code's been turned into Swiss cheese. And certainly the concentrated wealth and accumulated power and the systematic deregulation of Wall Street has led to this situation where the economy isn't working for most of us. All of that is true, but it is not true that regulation holds poor people down or regulation keeps middle class from advancing. That's kind of patently bullshit. Oh, I love that. I love when Democrats start acting like progressives. I love when Democrats actually start acting like liberals. Isn't that refreshing? But it's also kind of sad when we look at most of our Democrats that are corporatists, that are hawkish. And look, we've seen, I, I, I've levied that charge at Hillary Clinton. And in doing so, she's changed her rhetoric. I've been actually quite surprised at her rhetoric. However, as Martin O'Malley puts it, talk is cheap. And all that we've seen from Hillary Clinton so far is talk. And look, you're going to get that from all politicians. But at least Martin O'Malley seems to have some experience behind him in actually trying to put down progressive policies, pass them down in Maryland. Now, that's much more than Clinton's had the ability to do so. So we'll see. And I'll be really curious to see if Martin O'Malley will be successful at pulling Hillary Clinton over uh, back to the left where she belongs. And not only just in rhetoric, but in policy positions, I don't know. And there is that possibility, and it might be small, considering his uh, he's behind in the polls quite a bit, behind Hillary Clinton, if uh, he could basically Obama her. Because remember, Hillary Clinton had it in the bag, supposedly in 2008. And then a little-known senator named Barack Obama came out of nowhere and knocked her out of that spot. And we all know the rest of the story. So we'll see. I mean, that's what I hope happens. If Martin O'Malley is truly the progressive that he is claiming himself to be, then I would love to see that happen. We'll see. It's still a long road to 2016, and uh, it's going to be an interesting time getting there.